Michelle Wee, also known back in the day as the female version of Tiger Woods, has almost disappeared from the golf world. From being a well-known superstar to being almost forgotten. In this video, we take a look at what really happened to her and why she felt offended by former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Does the sport tend to view female professional golfers as just pretty objects? Or is this just some misunderstanding? Keep watching to find out. The Early Life of Michelle Wee Michelle Sung Wee was born in Honolulu, Hawaii on October 11, 1989. Her father, Byung Wook Wee, is a South Korean native. Michelle's mother, Bo Wee, is a former professional golfer and model, and Michelle's parents immigrated to the United States from South Korea. Due to this, Michelle has what's known as dual citizenship, where she is a citizen of both the U.S. and South Korea. In June 2007, Michelle Wee graduated from the Punahawa School, a college prep school in Honolulu, before she went on to attend Stanford University, where other members of her family had taught or attended. In September 2007, we enrolled as a professional golfer. However, she was not eligible to play for Stanford's golf team due to the NCAA's strict rules on professionals playing amateur sports. To pursue her passion and skill for golf, she would take leaves of absence from the school for the remainder of the year. We was very focused on her college education and fledgling professional golf career. So to manage both, she would schedule her courses during the fall and winter months when there are fewer golf tournaments played. This would help her find a semblance of normalcy that's often hard to find when golfing in front of thousands of spectators. Classes gave her something to focus on and a sense of accomplishment away from the fairway. By March 2012, she completed all of her classes and would go on to graduate in June of the same year. This was a big moment in Michelle Wee's life as it showed that she was more than just a golfer. Extreme Early Success We started playing golf when she was just four years old in 1993. By the time 2000 rolled around, at the age of 10, she became the youngest player to qualify for the U.S. Women's Amateur Public Links Championship. Eight years later, Wee's mark would be surpassed by another Hawaiian woman, Allison Corpuz, who qualified when she was five months younger than Wee had been when she set the record. In 2001, we became the youngest player to advance to match play in the Women's U.S. Amateur Public Links Championship. She won both the Hawaii State Women's Stroke Play Championship and the Jenny K. Wilson Women's Invitational the same year. The Jenny K. Wilson's Women's Invitational is one of the oldest and most prestigious women's amateur tournaments in Hawaii. At just 11 years old, she was also the youngest player to ever advance into match play at the tournament. In 2002, we won the Hawaii State Open Women's Division by a very large margin. She also became the youngest player to qualify for an LPGA event, the Takafuji Classic held in her home state of Hawaii. Even though she didn't play well enough to advance in that tournament, her record stood for five more years until it was broken in 2007 by another young player, Adia Jutunugarn. At the 2003 Kraft Nabisco Championship, we became the youngest player to make an LPGA cut. In the third round, she carded a 66, tying the amateur record for a women's major championship, placing the then 13-year-old in the final group of the championship. We won the women's amateur public links tournament in June 2003, becoming the youngest person ever, male or female, to win a USGA adult event. Later that summer, she made the cut at the US Women's Open, becoming the youngest player ever to do so. We received a sponsor's exemption to play in the 2004 Sony Open in Hawaii at age 14, becoming the fourth youngest female to play in a PGA Tour event. She would miss the cut, but had the lowest score of any woman in the tournament. The following year, she again received a sponsor's exemption to play in the Kraft Nabisco Championship, where she wound up finishing in fourth place. She also became the youngest woman to play in the Curtis Cup tournament as part of the victorious U.S. team. Her 2005 season started off with another sponsor's exemption. This time, we was invited to play in the Sony Open in Hawaii. However, she again missed the cut. 
She played in five more LPGA Tour events that year, as well as one PGA Tour event, the John Deere Classic. In October of that year, she announced that she was turning professional. She signed sponsorship contracts with Nike and Sony, reportedly worth more than $10 million per year. Professional Career Michelle became eligible to play full-time on the LPGA Tour in 2009, after she tied for seventh place at the LPGA Qualifying Tournament in Daytona Beach. Prior to that, she was only allowed to participate in a limited number of events, after she was given a sponsor's exemption in 2005. We had some success early in her career, but struggled later on and was unable to win any tournaments. She took a break from competition in 2007 due to injuries, but she came back the following year and was able to qualify for the tour. The young golf phenom had yet to win a tournament as a professional golfer, but was poised to continue her journey as a pro on the tour. Wee's journey to LPGA membership. In 2008, Wee finally became an LPGA member after passing the grueling LPGA qualifying school. Though she had planned to continue playing in tournaments against men, she did not receive a sponsor's exemption to play in the Sony Open in Hawaii. Wee's first tournament as an LPGA member was the season opening SBS Open at Turtle Bay. In early March 2009, it was reported that Wee had left the William Morris Agency and would be signing with a sports agency. Later in the season, we had a strong performance at the LPGA Championship, her best finish in a major since 2006. However, she failed to qualify for the U.S. Women's Open. In August, we became a captain's pick for the United States team in the Solheim Cup competition, where the American squad went on to win the tournament, with we compiling the best record of any player on the team. On November 15, 2009, we won her first professional individual tournament, the Lorena Ochoa Invitational. She then finished second in the Ladies European Tour season-ending Dubai Ladies Masters Tournament. Her third LPGA Tour victory came on April 19, 2014 at the LPGA Lot Championship. On June 22, 2014, we won her fourth LPGA Tour event and first major championship, the U.S. Women's Open. Beginning in 2020, we will contribute to CBS Sports multimedia golf coverage which includes the Masters Tournament. In May 2022, she announced that she would be stepping away from the game following the 2022 U.S. Women's Open. For a large part of her career, we found herself at the center of controversy. However, none created as much grumbling as her frequent use of exemptions play on both the LPGA and PGA Tour events. The U.S. Golf Association, which annually hosts amateur and professional national championships, occasionally grants players exemptions in the men's and women's open, allowing them to compete without having to win or qualify for any rounds. In 2004, the U.S. Women's Open granted we an exemption, but when it was announced, several professional players expressed their unhappiness. They believed that we should earn her way into the event, which would be fair to other professional golfers. When we was first allowed to compete on the tour, many people were skeptical of her skills. However, she went on to prove herself by making it to the third round and finishing in 13th place. This silenced many of her critics and showed that she was a force to be reckoned with. Severe Health Issues Although Wee was regarded as one of the most skilled golfers in the nation, earning her millions of dollars a year, her form in recent events was hindered by new health problems. In spite of competing in multiple LPGA events, she hadn't put up any great scores and her erratic play seemed to be the result of her declining health. Her wrists were the initial source of concern, an injury from an apparent fall. Later, other joint issues in her back, hips, and ankles slowed Michelle's progress. Suffering from a respiratory condition also prevented her from playing golf, adding further complexity. To make matters even worse, she recently discovered that she has dietary allergies. The Korean-American golfer stated that she would love to return to competition following her marriage to Johnny West, but she believed it would be very difficult, though she vowed to give it a try. Johnny West The son of NBA legend Jerry West and the Golden State Warriors Director of Basketball Operations married Wee in a beautiful private ceremony on August 10, 2019 in Beverly Hills. Shortly after having their daughter, McKenna, on June 19, 2020, we decided to hang up her golf spikes to focus on taking care of her daughter. 
However, just two years later, she decided to hit the links, coming back to participate in the Kia Classic. Rudy Giuliani Drama Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, found himself in hot water after making a joke that most, including we, found offensive. Giuliani stated during a podcast, Michelle Wee is stunning. She's six foot tall and she has a peculiar putting stance. When she bends over, her underwear is visible. The press went berserk, attempting to get images of her underwear. It wasn't me, it wasn't you, it was her underwear. Michelle Wee found it so disturbing that such an inappropriate story would be made by a public figure. She felt it would have been reasonable if he had instead commented on her sporting prowess, record of achievements, or even playing with and defeating some male golfers, instead of resorting to sexist and misogynistic remarks. After Giuliani found out how outraged Michelle was, Giuliani began to refer to the story as a joke. When asked about her putting technique, she responded by saying that it helps her to visualize her putts and improve her stats, not as an invitation for people to look up my skirt. She added that if she does return to golf, she will speak her mind about how women athletes should be celebrated for their sporting achievements and not objectified. Michelle wants to make sure her daughter grows up in a world where women athletes are celebrated just as much as the men she played against. Can she recreate the effortlessness of her previous swings? Do you believe we will return in a way that will astound the golfing community? Give us your thoughts in the comment section below. And be sure to check out the Golfer's Lounge for more fantastic golf videos.